Hello guys, today I'm going to talk about Floyd Warshall algorithm for finding the shortest path between all pairs of nodes in a graph. So imagine I give you a graph and you want to find the distance, the shortest distance between the nodes 1 and 2. You could say that you can go directly from 1 to 2 and then the direct distance, the shortest distance would be 9 uh, because I can go directly from 1 to 2. Now if I tell you there's one intermediate node that you can use. Basically, you can go from 1 to 0, and then from 0 to 2, rather than going from 1 to 2 directly, you could say, OK, I can update the distance, the shortest distance between 1 and 2, to a new value, which is the minimum of 9, my previous value that I calculated, plus the value of going from 1 to 0, and uh, plus the shortest distance of going from 0 to 2. The first one would be 3, the second one would be 3, therefore we are calculating the minimum of 9 and 6, which would be 6. Now, what if I tell you there's yet another node that you can use, it's still between the path between 1 and 2, and now that you can use this one, I can say the distance can now be updated to the previous distance, which is 6, plus the shortest distance of going from 1 to 3, and then the shortest distance of going from 3 to 1. This value would be 4 plus 1, and then the minimum of 6 and 5 would be 5. Therefore, I can go from 1 to 0, then to 3, then to 2 at a cost of 5. So you see that I sort of give you uh, no node, no intermediate node in the beginning. So you can say I can go directly. Then I tell you, hey, you're allowed to use only one node between 1 and 2. So you can update your distance to 6. Then I give you two nodes. And then you could say, hey, I can update this value to 5. In the extreme, I can give you your allowed to use all n nodes as an intermediate nodes, therefore you have much more freedom. Therefore, if we repeat this from 0 to 1 to 2 and then to n, the shortest path at the end should be the actual shortest path between 1 and 2. I can generalize this and say the shortest distance between all i and j using the k first nodes is shown by d of i and j and k. A function with three parameters that shows the shortest distance of going from i to j using the first k nodes. And then I can generalize the moment that I'm adding the kth node and I can say whenever you're adding the kth node it you are comparing the case of going i to j with only k minus one nodes to the case that I go from i to k first using k minus 1 nodes, and then I go from k to j using k minus 1 nodes. And then I can generalize this minimum value that we calculated, which takes the minimum of this path, the direct path between i and j using k minus 1, and then i to k plus k to j. And I can sort of come with this recursive value, if you notice, the d of i and j and k now depends on d of i, j, k minus 1, d of i, k, k minus 1, and d of k, j, k minus 1. So each time, uh, we, k depends on a value of k minus 1. All right, so now let's see an example. So this is a graph, this is a bigger graph, and the first thing I do is to create a matrix that shows that the edge values, the weights between each i and j. For example, between 0 to 1, the edge value, the weight is 3. So 0 to 1, I put 3. And I do this for all the edges. And I put 0 for all, uh, for the, uh, to represent the distance, the shortest distance between each node to itself. So 1 to 1, 2 to 2, everything on the diagonal would be 0. And then if there's no no uh, if there's no edge between two nodes, for example, between 0 and 3, there's no edge, I can put uh, a, an infinity to represent that. Uh, so this matrix, this initial matrix, is a direct translation of our graph. We haven't calculated anything yet. And uh, let's write our our recursive uh, function that we just came up with here. Uh, and I'm showing you on the bottom left the case where you're not allowed to use any intermediate node where we start from. Now in this graph, if I tell you now you are allowed to use node 0 as intermediate, there are certain i and j, certain nodes that 0 is between the path 
between i and j is on the path between i and j which we can update for example between 1 and 5 there is no edge so the path the shortest path of the 1 and 5 was infinity now using when we are allowed to use 0 the shortest path between 1 and 5 is going from 1 to 0, 3, going from 0 to 5, 1, so the value gets updated to 4. There's one more update that we can do, which is uh, node 2 to 5, 2 to 5 used to be infinity, now I can go from 2 to 0, then 0 to 5, and that would be 11. And, and remember, so far, we are only uh, allowed to use node 0 as intermediate value. Now, I repeat this one more time, so with this new node 1, I'm not allowed to use nodes 0 and 1 as intermediate values. And this, this way I can, I can go through all i and j and see what are the values that I can update. For example, for 0 to 2, I used to go from 0 to 2 by 10, but now I can go through 1, so 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2, uh, that would be 9 rather than 10. Let's look at one more case, which was 2 to 5. It used to be 11. Now I can go from 2 to 1, then go to 0, then go to 5 for a cost of 6 plus 3 plus 1, which is 10. So I can keep doing this and then use the new nodes each time. And then once I use all the nodes, this matrix will get the shortest path between all i and j. And this is, that is it, that is the insight of Floyd Warshall. There's no other uh, magic or tricks. All we do is to add intermediate nodes one by one and update this matrix. Uh, this is a translation of that uh, formula in C++. You can write it in any other language. So I'm writing a recursive function which calculates the value of i and j and k based on i, j, k minus 1, going from i to k with k minus 1, and then going from k to j with k minus 1. We add this together and then we calculate the minimum. And this is representing, k represents using nodes 0 to k. Therefore, our base case would be when the k, k is less than 0, which represents you're not allowed to use any intermediate nodes. Therefore, the value should be the direct edge between i and j. And that's it. That's, that's all what Floyd Warshall is. Now, this is a recursive function. You can take the recursive function and say, um, well, I was iterating through i and j for updating this matrix each time. So this iteration looks like we are having two loops, one for i, one for j. And then I was doing uh, updates on k is equal to 0, k equal to 1, k equal to 2. That represents another for loop. So maybe we can come up with three for loops one inside the other. The first one is iterating through k, second one is iterating through i, third one is uh, iterating through j, and then each time I can say the new matrix value of i and j is equal to the minimum of the previous value, uh, the previous shortest path between i and j, comma, the shortest path, the previous shortest path of going i to k plus going to k from k to j. So that's the main, that's the meat of the Floyd Warshall algorithm non-recursive version. And then uh, this first few lines just initializes the matrix to what we just said before. If i is equal to 0, the, uh, I'm not exactly showing this, but these weights are initialized. If i is equal to j, this the ij is initialized to 0. And if there's no edge between them, we initialize it to infinity or a very large value in, uh, in your program. It can be a very large integer. Uh, a summary of what properties this algorithm have. So you saw we already have three uh, for loops, therefore the runtime complexity is theta of n3. Memory complexity, we have an n by n uh, matrix, therefore it's all n2. We are calculating all pair, it's the shortest path between each i and j, so it's called all pair shortest path algorithm. We didn't talk about this. Um, but just be aware that it's okay in this algorithm to have negative edges. This algorithm still works, still handles it, as long as you don't have negative cycles. 
And remember, if you have negative cycles, the shortest path cannot be defined. It doesn't mean, uh, it's meaningless to define a shortest path if there's a, a negative cycle reachable from your source and target nodes. Therefore, uh, this algorithm would not work when you have negative cycles, but at least it can report and let us know. Again, I'm not talking about it how, but just be aware that uh, if you want, you can modify it slightly and find out if you have negative cycles in your graph. And that's it guys. Uh, I hope you like this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next ones. Goodbye.